Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. It's August 6, 2018. You were watching the Theo Knight video. First and foremost, the S&Ps, well, they chugged a little bit higher today. Let's uh, be specific over here. The S&Ps closed up. 2850 actually broke off of our gravity point right around that 2841 2842 level that we talked about in this weekend's video however people it's one of the lowest volume days that we've actually seen in recent history in the s p futures in fact it is worth going back and exploring this kind of on a daily chart uh, behold, we're actually going to open up the daily chart and take a look at some of the volume. But uh, yeah, this is where the volume happened to be specifically today. Uh, again, in terms of a full trading session, I mean, you literally have to go back to the Christmas holiday. Now, it's unfortunate that I have to even mention that. But again, although there's trading activity right now, it is incredibly light nevertheless in kind of a light day where we just start to grind to the upside hey you got to ask yourself what if this continues for the remainder of this month you know people say it's summer trade well guess what i have got some strategies for you now i'm going to start with what i mentioned okay in this weekend's kind of video in this weekend update i mentioned a bit about a ratio backspread that i was doing and I'm doing these ratio backspreads on, okay, a week to week basis. And effectively what I'm doing, you can see I'm carrying positions in here. I'm turning around and I'm selling, all right, one of the 284s, then to finance the purchase of buying three, okay, of the 286s. Now this happens to be done for a net credit and that credit earlier today i received as high as about 19 cents it's a net credit of about 19 cents again sell one buy three obviously the pricing and uh and the markets change throughout the course of the day but just to give you a kind of a quick idea we're going to open up the order entry we'll turn around and sell one and buy one two three oh right now see it's right around 18 cents so this is a portion of the trade and we've come over and we analyze that portion all right, and I'm actually going to close up this SPX trade here for just a second. If we analyze this portion of the particular trade, there happens to be what we term the valley of death, which is, you know, apparent really in any ratio backspread. Now, for those of you, if you don't have a tremendous experience with a, a strategy like a ratio backspread, again, I will scroll here specifically to the ratio backspread so we can get better eyes on that particular trade as I kind of walk you through and then we'll talk about the SPX trade on top of it but as you look through this uh, this ratio backspread effectively again what you're doing is selling right here these 284 calls to effectively buy okay times three of the 286s and right in that area there it's kind of what we call the valley of death because as the market starts to chug to the upside if the market explodes higher well our profitability can explode higher with it but to explode higher we got to cross through again this hideous little valley over here but the reality happens to be that that hideous little valley Okay, and this kind of hard line that can only be achieved at expiration. So as long as we exit this trade and again, this specific spider trade, if we exit that thing on Friday morning, the latest, because the options we're using people, these are one week options. They expire this Friday. As long as we exit that thing okay, on Friday morning, we're OK. And the type of loss that we're going to achieve is probably only going to be like on one contract. You'd probably lose right around one hundred dollars, maybe. At most, if you waited an hour into the open, maybe about $120 if you were to do one unit. When I say one unit, that's sell one, for instance, buy three. That would be one unit of the spread. Now, let me kind of continue with a little bit of this logic. So a question, of course, will come into play. All right, first of all, why are you even doing this particular spread? Again, it's looking for a move. It's looking for a move, an explosive move to the upside. So the markets have already chugged a little bit higher today. Maybe they head a little bit higher tomorrow. And let's say later in the week, they do break to the upside. But the concern, of course, is kind of that valley of death. But before we get to the valley of like death in this trade, and that is literally what it's called in a ratio backspread, it's also important to kind of understand how expected move plays a very viable role in this particular trade. What the expected move happens to say is that this week we're supposed to move just shy of about 30 bucks. Okay. And if you look to the upside of this trade, and when I say the upside of this trade, 
Here's what we did today, chugged a little bit higher. And as I said, with the ratio backspread, we have to break outside of what is expected. Now that doesn't happen a tremendous amount. Okay. And the risk is what happens if we fall right on the edge of the expected move? Well, right on the edge of the expected move in the SPX is 28.70. That would actually leave us right in that valley of kind of death on our ratio back spread. So again, it's very notable to kind of put this in the context, if you will, of the chart that we don't just need us to kind of grind a little higher. We need us to explode higher, exploding specifically outside of the expected move. And again, for those of you that are a little bit more in tune with options, this is going to make a whole lot of sense. We have to move outside of effectively what is expected. Now, okay, with this idea, let's go back over here to the spiders for just a moment. So we'll cruise back over to the spiders and you can see again the valley of the death and breaking us outside of that valley. Now, before I go any further, if you just have on, let me close up this SPX portion, if you just have on the ratio backspread, it's very important to know that if the market were to tank, okay, absolutely tank, you still get to keep a decent credit. And again, that credit I received earlier in the day was right around between 18 and 19 cents. Again, the price is going to fluctuate here kind of in the after hours. So if the market were to tank, okay, nevertheless, I still get to keep the 19 cents. However, just a, a little bit of an addition to this, why not just layer in a butterfly on top of it? And what I'm doing in this particular circumstance is I just put on an SPX butterfly Okay. And you're like, well, why did you do that? Because I layered the SPX butterfly on, okay, right into the edge of where that expected move happened to in effect be. And what that did is it changed, okay, drastically changed where my valley happens to be. So let me actually give you the before and after picture. Without the butterfly, without the butterfly, 280s, you know, that 286 in the uh, in the spider is hideous. With the SPX butterfly, well, the 286 isn't looking half bad. What's the downside? What's the downside of layer, you know, layering in that butterfly? Butterfly is going to cost me 30 cents, okay? Although I'm receiving a 19 cent credit, uh, credit on this back ratio. So net net, first of all, there's quite a bit of commissions involved. There's five different legs to this trade, but we're in a kind of a quiet market that's grinding to the upside. And you're in a quiet grinding market, you have to start to get innovative. And right now in this kind of skewed market, and that skew is the implied volatility skew, this is the kind of stuff that you can do and there's really, really minimal risk. So what, I pay 30 cents for this thing, plus transaction costs, okay? Then I collect 19 cents here. What am I into this thing for? Net 11 cents plus all the transaction costs. So I'm net 11 cents. So if the market's to crash and burn, okay, I'm going to lose what? 11 cents. Meanwhile, I'm giving myself a phenomenal upside opportunity. Anything above 287, anything above 287 in the spiders and, you know, we're good to go. Now, again, that's still breaking outside of the expected move. Meanwhile, okay, what happens if we don't go outside of 287? What happens if we fall dead on 286? Okay, on expiration, guess what? I'll hit the butterfly. And again, this is a little bit of creativity in a marketplace. Well, that's just not giving us a whole lot to work with. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theotrade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.